Maybe you know someone who's pouring all of their money into something that will make them rich. And if you have to believe them, really extremely rich. It could be a Tesla stock, a new venture, uh, cryptocurrencies, whatever it is that they're betting their whole livelihood on. And in conversations with you and on social media, they're trying to convince you and everyone else that everyone else should also join in on this investment opportunity. Maybe in hopes of further driving up the value of their own investments. And then you start wondering, what if they're right? Am I missing out on something? Or is this just a fever dream? In the moment itself, it can be very hard to understand what you're dealing with. Usually it's a fad or even a bubble that later gets deflated. And in hindsight, you see all of the red flags. But what if we could have some characteristics that help us determine in the moment whether you're looking at this fantastic opportunity or a bubble in the making. So today, let's have a look at the characteristics of a bubble. And we'll do that with one of our main characters in this bubble, which is this beautiful flower over here, a tulip. It's a remarkable story of how tulips turned the common man into kings one day and beggars the next. And it all happened in the Netherlands in the 17th century. But to really understand what happened here, we need to go back even further in time to 10th century Persia. Tulips have been associated with status for the longest time. In 10th century Persia already, we find the records of affluent people sending each other thousands of tulip bulbs just as a gift to each other. And already back then, they were known as beautiful flowers. And even they were kind of hardy, but that's not the main reason why they were so interesting. Growing a tulip from the seed to full blooming takes seven years. Now think back of the 10th century. The average lifetime then was around 35 years. So um, that's a huge investment. At this point, tulips are not growing in most parts of Europe yet. That changed when in 1554, Ambassador Auger Guillain de Busbeck visited Constantinople in modern day Turkey. He saw these tulips and he sent back a few to his friends at the Austrian Habsburg Empire. And that was the first match that would light a passion for tulips in Europe. And it was so different from all of the other flowers on the continent. It took a few more years before tulips really caught on. One of the most influential scientific horticulturists of the 16th century was a guy named Carolus Clusius. And he planted tulips in large quantities in Europe. First in the Vienna Empirical Gardens in 1573. And then he kept researching and growing them until uh, 1593, when he became a director of the gardens at the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. So he discovered breaking, the breaking of tulips, which is where a bunch of weed colors suddenly appear on the petals and which helps to fray um, the petals into beautiful patterns. And this is caused by a virus, but it would take until the 19th century before people figured that out. They're coveted. It's something exotic, something unusual. And this increase in value actually gets confirmed in 1596 and 1598, when thieves actually raid his gardens to steal hundreds of tulips. I just want you to think of that for a second. Raiding someone's garden to dig out all of the tulips, load them into a cart, I imagine, and then drive off into the night with a bunch of tulips. Oh, and the Dutch also figured something interesting about tulips. You didn't really have to wait seven years um, to grow a new tulip and make it bloom. If you could make it multiply its bulbs in the ground rather than growing the seeds. So that means they found a way to grow tulips in one year time instead of seven years, which, you know, mind blowing. And so the game is on. We have valuable tulip bulbs, we have variety among those bulbs, we have ways to reproduce the bulbs, 
Um, what else do we need? Money. Tons of money. Around that time, actually, a lot of people in the Netherlands became far more affluent uh, because of the trade in spices. And those merchants wanted to display their status somehow. And it became a real thing to show your wealth with um, the number of tulips you could afford. So if you wanted to be a real boar back then, you would grow tulips in your garden. It's like the ultimate rich flex of the 1600s. And as with all shiny things, more and more people joined this tulip trade and the speculation in tulips. Information back then traveled more slowly, so it took quite a while for this bubble to grow. But from the 1600s until 1636, the value of bulbs grew to such astronomical high amounts that it could, that one bulb could actually fetch one skilled workman's salary of a few years. Um, some bulbs even got sold for the price of a house in Amsterdam. The whole thing came crashing down in 1637 as, well, people didn't feel like they wanted to pay outrageous prices for tulips anymore. And two, tulip growers had been growing tulips like crazy. But whenever you have a high supply, high prices don't persist. The market does what the market does, it corrected itself. And suddenly people right, right and left had to break promises to each other on whether they were going to buy tulips um, in the future or not. And so people panicked and started selling their massive amounts of tulip bulbs at any price that they could, uh, leading to a price decrease of a good 99%. Now, while this story sounds amazing, the crash actually was really only a mini crash because the round of people that was affected by all this was rather small. And some um, economists today also suggest that the story might have been exaggerated a little bit by religious groups back then who want to drive home a, um, a message against greed. Regardless, I think it is a great story and there are some key takeaways for us. How do you recognize bubble material before it pops? First one, it's a fashionable new product. It has an unclear practical use. It offers questionable value. Zealots promote it fervously. There is an increasing price despite an increasing supply. I see too many similarities with cryptocurrencies these days. So um, beware. That's a wrap. Bit of a different style, bit of a different vibe. Um, let me know if you liked it in the comments down below. And you can always, of course, subscribe to this channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next one. Cheers.